Um, good evening. Hi. Um, so let's get going. Can you believe this is simply three? Simply three of nine. So we're a third of the way. Isn't that lovely? Um, cool. So we'll get started. I'm going to do blood transfusion. Um, Andy's going to do prescribing skills. And then we've got uh, gastro for two hours. So... Um, Blood transfusion comes up, and um, I think the last list of things that have come up in the OSCEs, it has come up almost every year in some shape or form. It comes up in the EMQs. So um, it usually, though, does come up in the practical or the OSCEs. Um, so what we're going to do today is basically do every combination that could come up in an OSCE for blood transfusion in about 25 minutes. So... <laughs> Let's um, be interactive, talk. I need one volunteer as well uh, in about five minutes just to sit here and be my patient. So um, someone pluck up the courage in a minute. So um, without further ado, these are four cases. Um, talk to your neighbour and decide the, with each of them, would you give them a blood transfusion? If you wouldn't, what would you give them? If you would, how many units would you give them? And then what other investigations or management might you think about? Okay, guys, so back. Um, so we'll go through them. Um, I can't remember if it. I won't jump to the next slide because I, I think it will just give you all the answers. So, um, patient one, Mrs. Irene Bleed, 23 year old, no symptoms. She's got menorrhagia, she's got microcytic anemia. Would we give a blood transfusion? Hands up for yes. Hands up for no. Wicked. Okay, so what would you do? You give her oral iron. And any other investigations? You can tell I'm a gynecologist. Um, no, so just nothing. So if you, she's got unlikely to have anything else. Um, just anemia, so you give her iron. HB of 84... So we're happy you wouldn't need to give a transfusion for that. Um, the next gentleman, an 86-year-old, again, asymptomatic, angina. Anyone would treat that with anything? Anyone would treat it with blood transfusion? No, we're happy not. Um, with anything else? Sorry? Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. B12 or folate? What do people think about that? Investigate it yeah, good. So investigate it first. So we've got a macrocytic anemia. You're right to say that they're two of the commonest causes, two of the only causes that will come up in finals um, or alcoholism. But investigate the cause, do your haematinic tests, and then maybe treat. Um, next gentleman, Oscar Deer. 73-year-old man presenting with an acute upper GI bleed. So who would transfuse? Uh, who would not transfuse? Okay, we've got one. Anyone else? So, so what, one of you three, what, why would you not transfuse? So his HB is not that low. Was that similar to what you were saying? Wicked. So, um, acute GI bleed, I agree that you can't tell how acute and how big the bleed is. But bleeding, 
you need to replace blood. Um, HB, they say, takes six hours to be completely accurate. If I took all of your blood volume out and then did a blood test straight away, your HB would be much the same. Um, it's probably not six hours, probably two is quite accurate. Um, but you need to wait for the, an accurate blood test. So you treat bleeding with blood. You're right to say until the blood comes, you can treat it with fluids because he's um, decompensating. But yeah, blood equals blood. And then Mrs. A. Smith, a 35-year-old post cesarean section, lost two litres yesterday, and you're seeing her the next day. Her obs are all fine, but haemoglobin 66. Who would transfuse? Yeah, good. Who would not transfuse? Anyone? No. Okay, so what's the cutoff for transfusing? Is it 80 or 70? 70, yeah. So the guidelines have just changed. It used to be 80. Um, below 80, you can consider it. Below 70, you should recommend it. It's now, as of last year, the NICE guidelines have changed to say 70 is the, um, what we should transfuse. So uh, 66 is below 70. And you can see, again, it's just a bit of logic that if she had an HP of 66 but had never had a blood test before, you could think about other causes. But it's, um, call, it's blood loss is two litres and a, an appropriate loss of blood. How many units would we give here? HB of 66. Hands up for one. Hands up for two. Hands up for three. Yeah, so more have said two. So again, I don't think they'll ask this in the final in finals because of the recent changes. So last year's NICE guidance says one. So it's called restrictive because we're giving too much blood to people and it, we're at a shortage of blood. And most people can compensate. So it's one unit and your target, so what you're trying to give, get them to, is above 70 as well. So it's like a car engine. It's all empty. You're just going to get it to half full. They'll feel a bit better and then treat the rest with iron. Um, whereas before, the, your other answers would have been more appropriate where you just decide to fill them to the top. But So one. But I, do, I think either answers, I mean, you see in hospital most would give two because most don't follow nice guidance. But, so I don't think they'll ask that, but just an interesting. So like you said, um, I think you're all happy with these. Okay, good. So we touched on these. Um, it depends on the case. Acute anemia is the commonest cause. Um, replace losses if it's perioperative or if they're bleeding, so replace it with blood. Uh, treat with symptoms, and HB of 7, so I keep saying 7, so 70 um, is what we should, and consider the alternatives. So we would give packed red cells is what we give. We don't give whole blood because it's better, more valuable to use the components. And you were right to consider that about one unit goes, it brings it up about 10 or 15, so 60 or 70, you could think two or three units um, would be appropriate to bring it back up to 10 that's less relevant now of NICE guidance. Platelets, again, only if they're bleeding and if you're worried that they've lost platelets um, or if they very, um, have very low platelets, then you consider it. And one unit would bring it up about 20 in the platelets. Um, FFP, only in, if there's acute bleeding or you're considering or worried about DIC and then whole blood. So... This is a standard OSCE. So this is your OSCE table. So you walk into OSCE, and this will be here. Um, I had it in mind. I'm sure Andy did. Oh, yeah, so it's Mrs. Andrew Smith, because I wrote it, um, and being an obstetrician, I only can think of one operation. So it was a cesarean section, and I thought, Mrs. Smith, and then I thought I'd make it Andy, and instead of changing the operation, I changed his gender. Um, <laughs> a bit one track so that's why it's Mrs Andy Smith um, so yeah work with me here because we're going to have to just move around a bit so we've all agreed that Mrs Andy Smith needs a blood transfusion we've all agreed on that so we now need to do the OSCE so we need to counsel Andy so I need a patient Andy's going to record 
so it can't be Andy. So can anyone just please sit here? Uh, just sit here. Caught, caught my eye. Um, cool. So what would you tell Andy? Hi, Andy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, what would we tell Andy? He needs a blood transfusion. Explain why. Good. Okay, so risks and benefits. So benefits, that's kind of in why. So he's lost blood, we need to bring it back up. Um, what other benefits? What will Andy feel afterwards? If we leave him, he'll probably feel dizzy, knackered, uh, take a long time to feel better, slower recovery from his caesarean section. Um, risks? What are the risks of a blood transfusion? A reaction. So be a bit more specific. Okay. So try and say that to Andy. So he's in your OSCE. Okay, so um, sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> Would Andy say yes or no? Do, you, do I want it? Andy, do you want it? Maybe. No. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, do you see what I mean? This is really important to practice. You all know, you could all write down the list of um, blood transfusion reactions, but then none of them are common. You all know that. They're all quite rare. About 95% of people will just go through a transfusion and just have no reaction at all. It'll just be like fluids going through there. The most common reaction is just a bit of a, a maybe a, a, you might feel warm you might feel a bit unwell but we'll monitor you very closely so the chances are you're going to be absolutely fine they'll have no reaction if you have a reaction the most common reaction is something that we'll be able to treat simply with um, paracetamol or just by stopping the transfusion or slowing it down and but there are some severe reactions that i need to tell you about and then you go into these but just make them sound less big. Um, but yeah, so completely right on the reaction, but just practice that conversation because you can make it sound really slick and it's not a, um, a reaction. The reactions are rare, so it's okay to sound. You can play them down a little bit, but you need to mention them. What do most patients to ask? What's the risk that they're worried about? Not acute hemolytic. Infections. Yeah, infections. Um, how common are infections? Very rare. How rare? One in 10,000. 10, millions. millions. Yeah, millions. So um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's um, HRV is like one in six million. Hepatitis is slightly more common. And um, CJD is, who knows? We'll find out. Three in, ever. Three ever. Cool. We'll find out in 10 years. Um, um, what I say, yeah, risks. What else would we give to, I uh, want to talk to Andy about? So we've said why you need it, risks. Anything else you would say? If you're going to offer any treatment, you say why you want it, the risks and the benefits, and I don't want it. Can I have anything else? So can, is there any alternative? So if Andy doesn't want it, you could offer him alternatives. And you can say these are not what I'd recommend, but you could have um, iron tablets to replace it. So all of this is going to be um, obviously online. So um, you can give them a leaflet, always give them a leaflet. I don't think many hospitals have leaflets for blood transfusions, but in OSCEs they do. So you can say, here's a leaflet. Um, I'll come back later. I'll get a senior. All these things that you say after every... And I'll document it. I'll document the whole discussion. Um, this is a lady who got HIV. Um, she also um, found the Daily Mail. And so now everyone thinks they get HIV. They don't. So one, yeah, so one in six million for HIV. Hepatitis, one in 1.3. Um, hep B and hep C is even less common. 
um, in this country. So some people might have travelled abroad and family members might have um, got these infections. And you can reassure that in this country we have many more checks and we check for all of these things, so it's less um, of a risk. So taking the blood sample. OK, so this will be the next part of the OSCE. So I've got a cannula. Um, Ah, yeah, sure. Oh, that's how it's going to get. Cool. No, because I need it in a minute. Um, cool. So, um, so then you'll have a patient or an arm in the OSCE. So the next OSCE scenario could be to um, take, so put a cannula in. So you all know how to do that. Simple. Put a cannula in. That's good. <laughs> good. You can do it one-handed now. Uh, so pink cannula. And then, uh, what bloods would you take? So you need to, you, we said we want to give a blood transfusion. So what blood would you need to take? He's already had an FBC. So group and save. Clotting. Why clotting? Okay. Do we? And it, it's stable. We know the reason. No. So just the group and save. Group and save or cross match? Okay, we've got murmuring. So who says cross match? So this is, remember, Mrs. Andy Smith, who's had a cesarean section yesterday. She's had a cesarean section yesterday. Stable, walking around, feeling a bit dizzy. HB of 66. OBS are all fine. So group, hands up for group and save. Hands up for cross match. Okay. So um, group and save. <coughs> so you take a group. They're both normally the pink ones. So you're taking blood. You're going to work out the patient's blood group, and you're going to save a sample for later. So pre-op, you might do that because you'll save it for later. Cross-match, the same sample will get... They'll look at it, and they'll match it for the blood that's in the laboratory or in their fridge, and then they'll bring it to you. So... A group and save, will, you, if you're doing something, you're predicting they may need blood in the future. So all pregnant women have a group and, a group and save. All people pre-op, if you're worried about blood loss, have a group and save. But a cross-match, if you're going to give the blood. Yeah. But if you don't have a group and save on Okay, so you need two group and saves because they're anal about these things. Um, and so you need one at some point. And that can be from historic, or in the last six months normally, or the last few months. And then one up-to-date one. Or, if you have nothing on file, then you need to take two samples. Okay? Probably already had one, yeah. If you take two at the same time, you can't take them at the same time. You have to take one, um, or you're meant to take one, and then you're meant to come back and take the other. Um, yeah. So that is the standard way of doing it. Some hospitals now are bringing in a new way of digital request format that if you use this patient, digital patient identifier, you scan on their wristband, that will act as your second blood sample and because they use that again to give it. So it would pick up very quickly if there's a mismatch. So uh, I think a lot of hospitals, it is still this two sample rule, but you may go to some. Okay, cool. So Andy's got a label on, name badge, obviously. Um, and then you take the blood. So we take the blood, and then I go over it, and I print the sticky label off, put it on. Right or wrong? Wrong. Wrong, okay. So, so you don't use a sticky label. So I take it, and I go over and find my cup of tea over here, and write the patient's name. Right or wrong? Wrong. wrong. Okay, so you, at the patient's bedside, you take the blood. You say, what's your name? Good, and your date of birth, I can't remember. Um, and then we check it, and we write it at the bedside. So you're writing on the bottle, and you're writing it at the bedside <laughs> with the patient. Positive identification, that's where you say to the patient, uh, you don't come up to them and say, Andy Smith, yeah, cool, um, blah, 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 and then write it down. You say, what's your name? And wait, and then they tell you the name, and then they tell you the date of birth. So positive identification, not because obviously people are slightly deaf or um, can't understand you 
um, then that's that. So blood sample taken. Good. So we're all happy with group and save versus cross match. Good. And then you write on the bottle and who you are, who the patient is, where it's taken and when you've taken it. Cool. So then you prescribe the blood. So you've just seen what I've written. Uh, so you usually um, have a blood, either a, a fluid chart. Um, yeah. Sorry. Please. Okay, wicked, thanks. Yeah. So, okay, so the question was, if he's already had a group and save in the lab, can we not just use that? So, if, so that every trust is different. Normally it's about 24 hours that they'll accept that. So if it was within the last 24 hours, you can ring them and say, can I add a, a cross match to that sample? If they've only got one sample or the samples, the nearest samples within 24, it depends, 48 hours, then, you'll need, then you can request it. Or if it's longer, then you need to do a new one. That makes sense? Yeah, so if you have a patient coming into A&E, mm -hmm. what you should do is you need to do one. You should do a group of save and a cross-match. Yeah, so it's um, what you... So it's the same bottle, it's the same sample you're taking, it's just what you're asking the lab to do. So you can ask for both, but when you say a cross-match, they will group and save. It's like the next step after they've matched the blood is to, for them to um, match it to someone else's blood. How long can a cross-match last? So if you say, um, you know, group and save and cross-match because the blood is filled there. Yeah. Okay, so, so when they match it, they physically will match it to someone's unit. So you've asked for three units, say. They'll, they'll have the patient sample here and they'll have their three units already issued to them here. So they won't go to anyone else. Um, they'll be matched to this patient. And then it, again, depends on the laboratory. So normally for 24 hours, and normally they'll call you if you haven't used it after 24 hours and say, do you still need it? Because then they can match it to someone else. Um, so um, like if the patient needs blood like five days later or 10 days later, how long is that? So... Yeah, so it's, it depends. So normally about 24 hours or 48 hours, yeah. Um, but it depends on your lab. So if you said that in Anoski, 24 or 48 hours, but I'd ring the lab to check. I think that's reasonable. Um, yeah. So, so add, what I mean by add it, you pick up the phone and say to the lab, I want to cross-match three units. Um, you've already got the sample, so can you match me? I, I give me three units, because I now want to give... Yeah, so you're not taking another sample if there's already one in the lab. Clear? Everyone clear? OK, cool. So then we're prescribing the blood. Um, so what do we prescribe? What am I writing here? Oh, you need to zoom in. What's the, um, do I write blood? Cool. So um, you need to write your, the patient's name up here and their, all their details. The Bart's Trust do it on the wrong side, so it's not a legal document. But Okay, um, you're obviously not adding, ever adding anything to blood. You're going to say one unit, so you, pre you prescribe each unit separately. So if you, you never write three units here, you write it, repeat it, repeat it. How, how quickly? Three hours? <coughs> Any advances? Four? Okay, so it has to be, the blood has to be got from the lab. This is my blood. I took it from Andy earlier. I was going to give it back to him. Um, so it has to be got, got from the lab, make it to your patient, be all the faffing rounds of the check put up, run through and empty within four hours. So, um, and, and if it's here, then you're not technically meant to use it. So all that faffing around probably takes an hour. So three hours is the, the slowest you, can, you should give it because all of those checks. So four hours maximum, but that includes all the checks from it's coming from the fridge um, in the lab to it being finished through the patient. So three hours, you can give it quicker. You sign it, you put your name, blah, 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 blah. 
Okay? So three hours packed red cells. Okay. So again, all of this is online. So I wanted to talk. So then the checks. So the lab, the, the port is a cram with your blood. There's the blood. Okay, so what do we do? So what checks do we need to do with the blood? Okay, cool. I made these. I'm really proud. Uh, yeah, you can't even see. Bloody made them and you can't see. Disaster. Um, okay, I'll hold them up um, and then we'll zoom in on one. So, yeah? Oh, you're kind. Maybe I'll put it on the big screen. Good idea. Ah, cool. I don't know what that noise was, but I'll take it as very impressed noise. Uh, okay, so uh, you have blood. That's um, red food dye, but you have blood, and then on it you have two stickers. Um, the blood that I've made, the bag is too small, um, so th and the thing I printed is too big, but they're usually the same size, yeah? Um, and then you have this little dangly bit. What's this? So you have the patient's details here, and what's this on the top? The compatibility or the order sticker. So when, the, when you've come, you need to do the checks. So again, you get the blood bag like this. We'll do the, I'll show you the checks. You come back to Andy, and you, with someone else, a nurse, someone, uh, a nurse who's standing here, another positive ID check. Uh, what's your name? Andy, good. What's your date of birth? Cool. And then we check. So you said it, so positive check. And then we're checking it on your label with the blood. So the blood in hand, two of you are looking at his label and say, Andy Smith, Andy Smith, date of birth, hospital number. We're good. Okay, you're happy? Good. Okay, and then, then this, this label on the top, you've done your checks, you take it off, and then you give this back to Mr. Porter, and the porter then takes it back. So then the lab say, wicked, that blood has been accepted and it's been given to the patient. That goes away. And then you've got this that you've done the check on as well. So then that's the patient's ID checks. All happy? Kind of. So two labels. One is on the blood. The second one is like the order sticker because every blood in this country... If you donate blood, um, you, uh, your blood is tracked from person to person. So even at this last stage, they want to track which patient has received your blood. And that tracking will go all the way to the labs, to the hospitals, all around the country. And this is the final tracking so that they can say that your blood that you've kindly donated has made it into this patient here. Okay? So the ID checks are done. So then what other checks do we need to do? We need to check that the collection date is the same as what you want and it expires, oh, that, that expires on your um, finals day. <laughs> it's a coincidence. Um, the only thing is I'm going to have to print these off every year. Um, and uh, Cool. And any other checks? Any other checks? We ready to give it to the patient? Yeah, wicked. So you check the blood, blood bag, okay? So you're checking. Say, so, okay, blood, has it got any clots in it? Has it got any leaks? You probably know that before, but uh, has any leaks, any clots? Um, and has anyone tampered with it? No? Okay, so that's the final check. So you're checking the blood looks like blood and hasn't clotted. Okay, again, it's all online, so you can go back through it. And then you document on your prescription chart here. You document um, blah, blah, blah. Check by me and Mrs. Nurse or Mr. Nurse. And then the, the number on the blood bag and the time it started. And then you will put the finish time. Okay? So that's all documented. Then you go back to the notes and write it in the notes as well. Um, okay, 
So, what are we doing here? Okay, so we're all happy. So then we're going to, we've done this. Yeah, okay, then we put up the blood. So, which, um, so you've got giving sets. You've seen, which giving set? This one, anyone? No, this one, okay. Because it's got this um, filter on it for blood. But not this one. This one, 100%, if you have an OSCE, this one will be on the table. And uh, 100%, right, 50% of you will pick it up and use it. And get loser mark. And then uh, you all should, probably half of you have done this. We're going to try and do it live on TV. So you get the, you're all wearing gloves as well. Half of you won't wear them. Cool. And there's two things. Do this this week. Don't do it with blood. Um, but do it with uh, fluids, which you can ask a friendly nurse. There's two holes, two holes on fluid. This one here that's got a seal on it is to put things in. You can see the remnant of where I put the food dye in. Um, but you'd never put anything in, in um, blood, but this is a fluid bag. So this is for putting thing, uh, medicines in. So if you're adding potassium, say, to normal saline, you get a needle and stick it through this valve. This one is the, for the giving set. So you hold it up, hold it up, put it in, like this. Um, and then two, oh God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, s turn it off. This is why you do it, because otherwise you wear a nice red sh white shirt, and it will go over your top, and then you'll be embarrassed for the next station. Okay, and then, still coming, who knows. Um, then you fill both chambers. So fill one chamber, fill the other chamber, not all the way, about halfway. Then you prime it. Prime it means you get the floor wet usually, but don't do that with blood. Um, and so you, I don't know how to do this here. Yeah. Uh, mm. So you, yeah, that's a good idea. And so you prime it, maybe not so you'll yeah. go to the green floor, take the end off. See, I've done this loads of times. Okay, so you prime it by getting the, the fluid to go nearly to the end. There we go. Flick. Okay, so that's primed. Okay, round of applause or something. Um, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so we, we need to move. Um, so prime, so practice priming fluid because that can come up in your fluid station. Um, but prime blood, then into the giving set, and into this little octopus thing, like this, which is already in the patient's cannula, like this, and then you're done. You're good to go. Okay? Then you hang it up, and you set the drip rate. All know how to do a drip rate? Okay, so uh, come, come to my fluid lecture. And we'll do drip rate. But yeah, set the drip rate or put it through like one of those little machines and go. Okay? Then you can go to the mess and have a coffee. Right or wrong? wrong. No, right. Because you tell your friendly nurse what to do and then to bleep you. Um, cool. Go, set drip rate. Document that you started it. Double lumen. Good. Okay, so when do observations need to be checked? Before? Good. You can't see what I can see. Okay, yeah, so these are all the putting up the blood, so it'll all be there for you uh, during the procedure. Okay, so when should observations be checked? Before? Next? 15 minutes? Next? An hour? Anyone else? Okay, initially... 15 minutes after that, hourly thereafter, and then at the end. And then additionally, if they have any symptoms, they're checking all the OBS, everything. And what you say to Andy, to press your little buzzer, when, what, what does Andy need to tell us about? Temperature. Temperature. Anything. Anything at all. To say, Andy, please tell me if you feel weird in any way, specifically if you feel feverish or you have shortness of breath or chest pain, but anything really. 
obviously they would tell you if they had blood in the urine, but you need to maybe mention that. So Andy now has, I'm aware of time, um, Andy now has these, so it's baseline knobs, 15 minutes in, presses the buzzer, doctor, doctor, I'm struggling to breathe, what would you do? Stop the transfusion. Next. OBS. A to E. So A to E first, then OBS, yeah? Um, or bring in someone else. So they're the three things you do. So A, A to E assessment, stop or consider stopping. If they're just like, oh, just feeling not that great, then you can assess them, but in most answers to stop. And then here are the re repeats. So that she's got a wheeze. And her temperature has stayed, gone 0.2 up. Is that relevant? Yes, maybe, no. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, blood pressure has gone down, 15 systolic. Relevant? Yes, definitely. Heart rate's gone up, 10. Relevant? Yeah. Saturation's gone down, 5. Relevant? Yeah. Um, when to stop? So these are what the guidelines say. I disagree. I think you just stop them if, if anything changes. If they have symptoms, you stop them and you ask someone else when to restart or to slow down. Um, I'm not comfortable doing that in blood transfusions. You guys shouldn't be comfortable in doing it. But the official line is an increase of one degree in temperature, a significant change of 10 in blood pressure, a significant rise. They don't say what. You can make your own judgment and any symptoms. So what, which one has Andy Smith got... I think that's very sensible, but not what the guidelines say. So I think you never get told off for doing it too often. If you're there, the one giving the blood, I want to do it more than... But the guidelines say before 15 minutes. If they have symptoms, because usually an early reaction would present with symptoms, then you do it quicker. Yeah. Um, which one's Andy having with his wheeze, dropping sats, heart rate rise? Charlie, Taco, any... Any of them, yeah. Could be anything. He's got everything. He's got some symptoms. He's had a blood transfusion. Most likely, he's having one of these. The most common is... Um, oh, sorry. He's having some chest symptoms, so Charlie and Taco. Taco's uh, circulatory overload. I've got a slide on it later. You're unlikely to get an overload within 15 minutes. Charlie is possible. Um, allergic reaction is possible. An acute hemolytic reaction would present in that similar way. But you don't know... The, the great thing about it is the management, like you said, is to stop the transfusion, do your A to E. You send the blood back to the lab because there might have been a problem. So you take it off, give it to Porter, and go back to the lab. And you keep, because blood will clot, so if you leave it in a little pink cannula, it will clot. So put a little bit of fluid, slow fluid going through, and definitely, definitely, definitely call for help. And then it, for A star marks, take another set of bloods, document all the history of what the patient's feeling, and then you can think about the specifics. Okay? Any questions on. Yeah. The latter. It's not common, but it still happens, which is um, shit. So, yeah, that's what we do. It. Well, so you just, you, if they're using flying, well, they send it with yeah. The yeah, so you still do the same checks. They still check it in the labs. No yeah. You may do OBS before 15 minutes if they're needing flying squad OBS. But um, no, all the checks are exactly the same. They're just done in a slip away. Uh, if they already have a OBS in their camera, it's uh -huh. already done. Do you have to take blood from the set for the needle? Yeah, 100%. You can't take blood from an octopus. You can't take blood from a cannula. If anyone's told you you can, you can't, shouldn't. You can from a central line. So even if you've just put the cannula in? Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, a new, a new, new one. Because blood's gone in. This new blood's gone in. A little bit of it has. So you'll just be taking a little sample of that. It'll be mixed. Yeah. You'll, get, you'll get a weird result, and then you'll say, is it because I've taken it from the blood arm? So, I mean, before you give the blood transfusion, when you're taking the cross match... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if you've just put the cannula in... 
Yeah, then obviously you can take blood from it. Sorry, yeah. Into, after the reaction, you can't. You need a new sample. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through these, but they, I, it's really important you read. These are more for the EMQs. They're a bit boring. So um, know your blood groups. Know which is the most common. It's a lovely EMQ question. You can see it written. Um, these are the early. These are the late. For OSCEs, for F1, it doesn't matter. You don't need to know them. You just need to know the general management. Um, and then I've just got a few slides on the specific reactions that you should just read through for EMQs, not for OSCEs. Um, have a think about Jehovah's Witnesses um, because they obviously don't want blood. Um, and so you need to just uh, learn about advanced directives and alternatives to bloods and um, where you give them the own blood, what's it, auto transfusion, whatever it's called. So you, they take, you, they sell, sell salvage where in an operation you can save their blood that they've lost and give it back to them because they like that. Um, so in summary, you need to know this for exams. This is why we're here. It will come up. It's easy. It's not difficult, but you need to know all the steps. Make sure you're giving the right blood to the right patients at the right time on the wards, look after them properly and learn those managements of what happens when it goes wrong. Any questions? Anything at all? Yeah? So what, when do you need two people is when you have the blood and you're checking this blood with this patient, does it all match on the label? You don't need two people to take a cannula and check those. It's only when the blood's arrived. Do you want to load up? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I mean that's taken <coughs> half an hour, or just over half an hour. Um, so normally, um, I think it would be reasonable to say in a history they might say consent this patient or talk to this patient about a transfusion. In an OSCE, they might say um, uh, set it up and it's there, and you have to go through the checks. Um, I think when I had it, it was all here. The cannula was in. It was all set up. Like it was, and you just had to do the checks and prescribe it. But just learn it all. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Whole of medicine. Yeah. Um, so I heard um, that you have to get qualified to prescribe blood. Yeah, you'll be qualified in August. Okay. So it's a good thing. Yeah. Any yeah. Any doctor. It's nurses have to be um, do specific training. Okay. Because so you're all having this teaching. Okay. <clears throat> two qualified people, so two doctors or a doctor and a, comp a nurse who's done the training. Okay, very good. Round of applause for Andy. <laughs>